purpose of this video is to give you a very brief introduction to analyzing qualitative data. In particular, we are going to focus on how one develops codes and applies those codes to your qualitative data to make analysis of that information more systematic. Just like quantitative data, qualitative data requires the researcher to analyze and interpret the information in order to bring about order and understanding. Here I am showing population data for several cities in Colorado for 2000 and 2010. At first glance, this numerical information is quite daunting, and it would be difficult for the reader to adequately understand the importance of this information, other than to see the rankings of the cities in size order. By conducting some simple analysis, the researcher can bring greater understanding to the data. Here, I show both raw numerical change as well as percent change from 2000 to 2010, which allows me to provide deeper interpretation of the data. The process is essentially the same for qualitative data. You don't just present all the raw text information you gather during your research in your final report. You conduct some type of systematic analysis and then interpret that information for your reader. The process you undertake will depend somewhat on the questions you want to answer, the needs of your audience, as well as the resources you have available to conduct the analysis. The approach I will focus on here is thematic content analysis. The qualitative data you will use for your research can come from a wide range of sources. It might include open-ended responses and comments on survey questionnaires, or it could be from interview or focus group transcripts. Qualitative data also includes any documents or reports you include as part of your research or even notes you take as part of observational research. The key thing to remember, though, is that these data do not, on their own, provide insight, explanations, or answers to your research questions. You do. The coding process is the cornerstone to successful qualitative data analysis. Strauss's quote here really sums this up. The excellence of the research rests in large part on the excellence of the coding. So, what is a code and what is the coding process? In a nutshell, a code is most often a word or short phrase that captures or summarizes information contained in specific text data. Coding is the process of combing through your qualitative data, looking for specific themes, ideas, and or categories, and then marking those passages of text with a code so that they can be easily retrieved at a later stage for further analysis. Coding makes it easier to search your data, make comparisons, and identify patterns. There is no single best way to code. There are two fundamental approaches to analyzing qualitative data, the deductive approach and the inductive approach. The deductive approach starts with a predetermined framework for the coding. Basically, the researcher has identified key theories from the literature or previous knowledge, has established specific hypotheses he or she wishes to test, creates a list of codes that represent the theories or categories of information to look for in the data, and then applies these a priori codes to the data to confirm, or not, the original theories. This has also been called a top-down approach. Some of the benefits of this approach is that it is relatively easy to apply because codes are determined in advance and the coding process only utilizes these predetermined codes. A downfall, though, is that key information might be missed. Another approach is the inductive approach, where the researcher starts with the qualitative data and no predetermined codes. The data itself serves to determine the structure of the analysis and development of the codes. The researcher carefully reads through the text to identify patterns and themes, and then develops codes to represent these themes. From this careful observation of the data, patterns emerge, which allow the researcher to generate hypotheses, which can lead to the development of a theory. This has also been called a bottom-up approach. In practicality, it is likely you will use a combination of both approaches. You already have a strong sense of the literature on your research topic, or you will by the time you are ready to conduct the qualitative data analysis. So you likely have some key ideas you will be looking for. 
However, you are also interested in learning about what emerges from the data itself. So additional themes will likely be developed as you work through the data. As you read more about qualitative data analysis, you will likely discover that the terminology used to discuss this type of analysis isn't consistent. It isn't like statistical analysis, where a t-test is a t-test and everyone understands what statistical tool you are looking um, using and how it is calculated. Common terms used to talk about qualitative data analysis includes codes, themes, and categories. Themes and categories, for example, often get used interchangeably in the literature. In general, however, a theme is the big idea or concept that that text you are analyzing reflects. Codes are the words, or sometimes short phrases, used to represent the theme during the analysis process. Sometimes you might have a structure of your analysis where you have an overarching big theme and then sub-themes underneath and then a set of codes to succinctly capture each sub-theme. This graphic shows one way of defining the key terms found in qualitative data analysis. Here, on the left side, you see the lowest level of analysis, the codes. These would be those words and short phrases the researcher assigns to the original text. The column to the right of the codes consists of the categories the researcher uses to group the codes into logical sets. There might even be some subcategories, as noted on the graphic. These categories then group to form a broad theme, and from here the researcher can generate or confirm a theory. This is just one example of how the terminology is used. As I previously mentioned, some researchers use theme and category interchangeably. Next, we are going to watch a very short video where two researchers discuss how to code a section of text. Okay, okay so starting from the top, I've got this theme from when I was about four. I've got actually bullying going right from the start of when I was about four and up until getting kicked and punched and just taunted really. And I've got that as um, a bullying theme or being bullied. Yeah, being bullied. And then the next bit also links in with the consequences of bullying. Yeah, I, I also think that we should separate out this issue of being picked upon and the more serious issue of physical abuse or violence um, because she talks about being taunted and picked on she talks about it getting progressively worse mm -hmm. but I think we should have a separate code to deal with this concept of actually being physically attacked or abused so so there's being bullied there's being bullied there and then there's being and then there's the types of bullying so to differentiate or to separate yeah. out the difference between being picked on and then physical being physically attacked as opposed to just being picked on and I think we should separate those two things out have so, a sub theme yeah a sub theme yeah we, I agree with that yeah you're okay with that okay so the two themes we've got there then are being bullied and a kind of sub theme under that of, of physical abuse and, um, this next bit, I always used to spend break times on my own. Social exclusion, social isolation. Um, that to me is different from being bullied. That's a consequence of bullying, or it's it, it is about isolation, isn't it? Mm. Um, I'm not sure if it should just be coded as social isolation or isolating or self-isolating because this is not people ostracizing her this is her choosing to spend time on her own so being so perhaps on, a wider being category just, own or being perhaps own. a wider category just social isolation would be, would be the best name for that, that that theme i think we should code it all the way to and that's when my passion for school really well i picked out really. I, and I, I would code the first half as social isolation and then that entire theme there as um, influence on schoolwork or influence on academic performance, something like that. What did you, what did you have? I just had consequences really, because I think... Consequences of bullying? Yeah, or responses to bullying, because 
I'm not sure if it's really influ- I don't really know if it's influencing her school or I think her spending t- extra time studying is a consequence of her it's kind of indirect isn't it it's like an indirect impact of the bullying as a compensation mm. but it's also part of the social exclusion it's like working studying is a way of keeping herself safe from being bullied She's spending it indoors, so she's away from people. So, really, we're either going to code this as consequences of bullying or influences on schoolwork. I think consequences of bullying is probably a more sensible category at this point because it's wider. Yeah. Because we don't it know be that this is going to recur very yeah. often. As you saw from the video, the coding process is quite iterative. The researchers themselves spend considerable time trying to get the codes and themes just right. Here is another example of the coding process. On the left is text from an interview with a parent discussing their son's experiences in middle school. For the first sentence, the researcher uses the code of middle school hell to describe or identify what the parent is talking about in that sentence. The sentence that follows, the researcher uses the code teacher's pet to describe the information. In other transcripts or elsewhere in this interview, anywhere the researcher sees evidence of relating to being a teacher's pet would be coded this way. The third sentence is coded by the researcher as bad influences. Again, anywhere else in this interview or other transcripts that relate to issues of being a bad influence would be coded this way. Here is another example. This one from a research project conducted by Professor Agrawal and her colleagues that looked at travel behavior and transportation expenditures of low-income adults in San Jose. On the top half of the slide, you see the code she used and their detailed definition. That is, what exactly does each code mean? Here you see that any time she uses the code auto, she is looking for text that discusses access that individual has to private automobiles. The bottom half of the slide shows how those codes were used to analyze a transcript. In this example, any time the interviewee discussed anything related to access to a private automobile, uh, the researcher used the comment feature in Microsoft Word to indicate that the appropriate code to apply to this section of the transcript was auto. Later on, she would consolidate all of the auto codes into a single document for further analysis. There are many different ways to actually complete the coding process. I'm going to present one approach, but you might certainly come up with other approaches that work better for you. The first step in the process is to actually run through a subset of the data to either develop your codes using the inductive approach or practice applying a set of a priori codes. This is the deductive approach. I find it easiest for me to assign a different colored ink either real if I'm doing this on paper, or digital if I'm using an electronic file to each code. Then any time I come across a section of text that is referenced by pink code, I highlight that section of text pink. You could also use the approach Asha used, which I described in the previous slide, and use the comment feature in Word to identify the appropriate code. Once I finish coding, I then cut and paste any text that is the same color or that has the same codes in the comment feature into a new document. Then I can use this reorganized information to conduct additional analysis and write up the results of my research. There is a ton of information available on qualitative data analysis and coding. Here is a list of a few handy references you might find useful to refer to for additional information. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful.